Well, hello class, and welcome to another video lecture about conflict management. I really wish you all were here. I'm looking at a sea of empty chairs, and this topic is really, you know, it's an important one, like all of them, but specifically, we're going to talk about interpersonal violence. This is the second video under managing violent tendencies. We discussed verbal abuse, and today we're going to talk about interpersonal violence and specifically physical abuse. So, uh, again, I wish you were here to discuss this. If there's any questions, please ask me via email. Uh, you know, you can zoom in at office hours or uh, ask me through Canvas, okay? And, and this topic might be triggering to some of you, so let me know if this is particularly difficult and, you know, you had difficulty getting through the lecture. Uh, there also will be a Weave video. I had a representative from Weave come out and uh, discuss a lot of um, domestic violence issues with students, so that will be part of this particular module. All right, let's focus on the study of interpersonal violence, and this comes from Con and Abigail, your textbook. You, they really are identifying three different ways to study interpersonal violence. The, these three approaches, the communicator personality trait, com communication cognitive, and interaction approaches. And let's focus on the communicator personality approach. So, a couple of parts to this, a couple of um, you know, components of this definition is, number one, it's a personality trait, and really we're looking at a learned personality trait. We learn beliefs in general, and not only that, so it, we're really looking at a learned um, abusive tendency. So you have learned to be abusive uh, in uh, your, as part of your personality, okay? Uh, so the second part of that is that there is a, um, a belief system uh, that you're pretty much, you're dogmatic about. You, you aren't really open to other explanations or other positions, okay? And so a common example is politics in the last few years. I've gotten a lot of those examples in class and how, and this was actually a student who said, yeah, I, got, I have a cousin who will basically get in a fight over his political beliefs, all right? And, you know, we've seen this in the, I think that's a lot, that's easy to understand these days. You know, we see this on the news in terms of people um, willing to come to blows because of their political beliefs. And that, uh, you know, according to uh, Khan, says that, you know, it's a, it's a specific personality that will come to uh, verbal violence as well as uh, physical violence, but also coupled with a specific issue that they're dogmatic about. So that's the communicator personality approach. Personality plus an issue can lead to violence, okay? Let's move on to another, more examples there about personality, and that is the emotion-behavior connection there, that we develop patterns. I think that's important to remember that, you know, there's, a lot has been made, and we've talked about the threat, fear, anger connection, that generally, Izzard and Ackerman talk about how behind our anger is some fear, right? And generally, when we experience fear, in, it depends on, you know, what we're taught, what we, uh, you know, the pattern that, or the habit we have developed, uh, you know, it could lead to violence. So sometimes, uh, you know, you see road rage altercations because some individuals have a, you know, once they're fearful, so for instance, if someone cuts you off and it almost, you know, causes an accident, you are fearful of your life. This, I, this just happened to me. Few, about two weeks ago where I was coming home with Mexican food. I have six people in my family and there were to-go boxes in the passenger seat. Person cuts me off on the freeway, doesn't check their blind spot, and I had to, I swore I was going to be in an accident. And I slam on my brakes to avoid the collision. Food flies all over the place, all over my floor. Salsa, guacamole, everything, right? And it's, it wasn't even that. I wasn't even upset. I mean, I was hungry, but at the same time, what I was most angry about is that I, I felt like my life was put uh, at risk. 
And I honked, I laid on my horn as I rode by and didn't come to road rage, but I know this. I think all of us are, if not all of us, most of us can relate to this experience. So sometimes people are wired to get into fights. People are wired to, you know, take that out in a violent fashion. That emotion behavior pattern has been well established with some individuals, right? So, and that's what we're talking about. Your personality has been learned, you know, within your personality, you've learned these patterns where typically I'm, I will act uh, more angry and then violent. Uh, and, you know, not, not that I will, but that's something that a lot of folks do. And you can see that. This is prominent in law enforcement. We're seeing quite a bit of videos where people, where law enforcement have been threatened and have used necessary or unnecessary force. That, you know, taught emotion behavior pattern is well intact and you see it consistently. At, generally speaking, when people, uh, law enforcement, feel that they're threatened or fearful, that that ends in violence. So, moving on to this se sequence again, you know, I, I like to ask students, the last time you were angry, what was the fear behind that anger? Right? Because that's really what this Isra and Ackerman uh, sequence is identifying. That there's generally a threat that leads to a fear that leads to anger. Okay? And that can be, like I just gave you examples of, of uh, folks on the road, you know, uh, law enforcement. You know, but it can be, oh my, you know, my best friend stood me up because she has a, a new significant other. And I'm, I was really angry. But, you know, the significant other is the threat. The fear is that I'm going to be pretty lonely without her. And, you know, it's going to be pretty sad. And so, therefore, I was angry. And, you know, any kind of anger, not any kind, but most kinds of anger you can find that there's some kind of fear behind it. And, you know, with the exception of, of loss, you know, a lot of times people experience loss. You know, Elizabeth Kubler-Ross did a, um, wrote about how when so someone close to you dies, you go through five stages of grief, and anger is one of them. So there's a variety of reasons, but oftentimes fear is behind it. So the next approach is the cognitive approach, the communication cognitive approach. So think about the, the communication personality approach. You have the personality, you have the issue, all right? But then add state of mind, because that's really what we're talking about, okay? You have the violence-prone disposition, the beliefs and attitudes of a particular issue, perhaps, and then you have the mental state. And really, that's what we're talking about, your cognition, right? Your, your cognitive approach is... Your, your state of mind. And so you can, some of you know that uh, friend of yours that is a mean drunk and it's no, nobody really wants to spend time with that person uh, at the pub because, you know, he's always getting in fights, right? Or frequently getting in fights. I think that that's a good example of it. Uh, a state of mind can also be, so it's under the influence, it could be, oh, I'm in an anxious or depressive state that some people, um, coupled with a specific controversial issue, could get into arguments or, or violent altercations because of specific um, feelings of anxiousness uh, or depression. Uh, some people, and you, you know who they are, can become more verbally or violently uh, abusive if they're hungry and tired and, you know, catching a cold. There can be a variety of impacts on their state of mind, and that's really what the cognitive approach is focusing on. And so that's the element we're talking about. I had a student who used the example of their housemate who always seems to be uh, throwing things around when he gets angry you know, in a physical display uh, during finals when he's stressed, when there is, you know, a lot of stress in this individual's life, uh, you know, and that really impacts his state of mind. So 
That's uh, the communication cognitive approach. And the last one is the communication interaction approach, okay? And this is very different than the other two. What you're doing is you're, you're examining this escalating antagonism, all right? Uh, we've learned the term schismogenesis, and it's very similar in that you are looking at the step-by-step -step actions that led to the physical violence, okay? And so you're examining the interaction. I think that that's the difference here, is that you are using this approach for, you know, as a tool for analysis of the interaction. And, and that's, you know, students call this a, a flowchart of the conflict and pinpointing where it spiraled, pinpointing what caused the violence. Okay, and sometimes that's difficult to, you know, put your finger on because there's multiple causes. Um, however, what can come out of this, and you've already seen this assignment, that we try to create processes that help break up the progression of spiraling. Now, this is specific to violence. We haven't talked about that uh, as of yet, but creating a process to, you know, break up the progression to violence, obviously, is something that um, is of utmost importance in so many different contexts. And that's really why I'm going to end this particular video after these, the um, communication interaction approach. Um, we're going to look at the, um, the particular violent cycle next. And if you haven't read about the interpersonal violent cycle, this is... You know, I think if we're looking at the uh, interaction approach, this is how we can break up, you know, the particular conflict and examine each stage. Okay? Well, thank you very much. I hope you have a wonderful day. And if you have any questions, please email me or Zoom in and, uh, you know, or contact me through Canvas and I will be happy to reply. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.